so we're going to cover some example facies. Right? And different ways that you can define them. So you want to define uh, your facies based on something that's, that's scientifically interesting in your rock. So, so one example would be based on grain size. So say I was looking at some sands deposited by a river or sandstones at the base of the channel where the Reynolds number is highest because the flow is deepest and that's where the flow is fastest, I might have pebbles. Um, so one of my facies might be um, a pebble uh, conglomerate. Right, so conglomerate is a, the rock made up of particles, mostly pebble, and it can have sand uh, between, this, between the sides of it. As the channel as you, uh, depth is, gets lower, the Reynolds number decreases, and the flow speed also tends to decrease, and so you tend to have finer grains uh, sands. And so I might have, in addition, a coarse... to medium sandstone. Right. So the way I describe these two, I'm, there's a difference in the grain size that would be, that would be my facies. Right. And let's say that there's sort of a back eddy at the side of, a, of the channel that has a very low flow speed and maybe in that particular case, it'd have a fine, uh, uh, sand, fine grain sandstone. So I described this in terms of, of the grain size for the river, but I could also do it by sedimentary structure because the sedimentary structure actually changes with the flow speed as well. So I could do grain size and then I could add um, the sedimentary structures. Right. So the pebble conglomerate um, at the pebble grain size you can either have upper planar lamination or dune cross stratification or lower planar lamination. Uh, a lot of times in uh, rivers uh, that are sort of medium-sized rivers, you often get um, the, the dune uh, cross stratification. So I'm going to add with cross stratification. Okay. Ripples don't form in pebble-sized grains, so uh, it's implied that it's dune. You could say with dune cross stratification to be more uh, explicit about it. So the coarse to medium sandstone, um, it could either be uh, in the, um, f at the flow speed of dunes or ripple cross laminated. So maybe if I was actually doing this, the sedimentary structures, I would make, I might divide this into two, one with um, a dune, I'm gonna do extract for cross stratification and maybe one with ripple cross lamination. The fine sandstones, we talked about those as having a lower flow speed and um, they don't typically have dune cross stratification. It's usually ripple or upper planar uh, uh, cross uh, lamin or upper planar lamination. So I'm gonna say that the flow speed's low um, so this would be with planar lamination. Right, so we've done sort of two different things uh, uh, with the facies. And you could use, often it's really nice if you could use both the grain size and the sedimentary structures. But if you have, say, a uniform grain size, you might just use the sedimentary structures. Um, or if um, 
the sedimentary structures are mostly dune and ripple, maybe the grain size is more important. And you would make that choice uh, based on uh, your scientific question. Then we have the issue of what to call them. How do you name your facies? Often what happens is when, you, when a scientist first starts uh, in a field, they use a name for them that's, that's very descriptive um, or is some sort of code. So like I might actually name this one, I could name it just like A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3. That's a little hard for me uh, to remember, especially if I have like six or seven different types. So I could maybe call this one like PC for pebble conglomerate, um, maybe CMSS for coarse to medium sandstone, uh, fine sandstone, that would work. If we divided this into two, maybe we'd add another um, uh, character or indication whether it was dune or cross-stratified or ripple cross-laminated. So th those would be working names when a scientist is making their observations, but then often what happens is that we, we use these facies as a means to interpret the ancient depositional environment that they formed in. And in that case, sometimes when we do the interpretation, we give names that reflect the environment. When we do that, sometimes we might say, um, like, the, the facies name would then become, uh, the, uh, the, for example, the channel base facies. Or channel bottom. And often the coarse to medium sand are, are on what we call a point bar. So we might call that, uh, so this would be 1 or A or PC. The, paint, the point bar facies would be the equivalent of 2B or the CMSS. Okay. So there's this sort of change in the name of the facies a lot of times as, as a scientist goes from being descriptive about what they see to interpretive uh, about what those groupings of characteristics in the rocks mean. So as we move on to talk about uh, depositional environments, we're going to be talking about which facies are typical of those environments and sub-environments and um, giving them um, names. And so uh, this, is, this is a concept that you can use for a lot of different scientific processes where you're going from observations you're categor categorizing those observations and you're using the way those categories accumulate to uh, interpret what those observations mean. Thanks for watching.